Welcome back to the channel again folks and to part 3 of our guide on how to paint the classic Flak 36 platoon from Flames of War. This episode we're uh, painting and flocking the bases, painting the crew and giving you the final reveal. So I've cleaned up the figures, removed flash mould lines, lumps under the bases and whatever. I have prepped the drivers by fitting them into the vehicles. These are really tight fit and the two and a half tracks I've had to um, do some filing. Now you notice I've got them stuck on the old bits of sprue. That's a convenient way for me to paint them. Same for the um, the guys who are firing the, 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 the seated figures are just glued to be tab that's attached to their feet or to the sprue and I'll cut that off at the uh, appropriate time. Now, I've also put everybody in position. First of all, it's shown me there's an extra figure, so it's one I don't have to paint. And then I can see how they're all sitting in their holes and as is often the case, with these, the fits okay in some cases, very good in others, and they don't fit for some. So I need to trim some bases. Um, this is a good way of basically you want to do the trimming before you do the painting. So I'm going to go on to that next, and then the guys will be ready for me to um, uh, to get the undercoats on, and we'll have a look then at what kind of colours we're going to paint. Which particular guys? So we've got lots of ammo crates here on these uh, extra, the bases for the extra loaders, the extra crew. So you'll have seen me paint these on the half tracks already, so I'll just give a quick recap. So the colours are US field drab, old wood, and Iraqi sand over the standard base coat colour I use of um, German camo black brown. Now I'm trying to paint these the coverings, the sort of wicker type coverings in a way that will leave some shade but they're not just going to appear black. Um, so you, you can see there is quite a bit of shade left in there but not too much. And I'm now putting the, the old wood on just to brighten them up a bit, work around those edges. You can see that's starting to fill in. It's got a bit of depth to it, leaving some of the US field drab as well as some of the uh, base colour visible. And then Iraqi sand, hitting those edges first. So you see me roughly bouncing the brush along the edge as opposed to trying to create a solid edge. And then just hitting the wicker pattern as well just to lift that out a bit and then the finer brush to define the edges a bit more and any wicker pattern that needs a bit of work. So there's lots of discarded shell casings kicking about on these bases and some shell cases still in the boxes. So colours I'm going to use for this is Game Colour Heavy Ochre Similar colours will do Japanese Uniform World War 2 This is a sort of non-metallic colour of choice for me That's the main colour, sorry And then Deck Tan for a tiny little highlight And also there are some shells which still have the rounds in them and have not been fired yet Look at that screen, sorry. I'm giving them a black undercoat and then it'll be um, gem and grey with a tiny little bit of London grey as a highlight to give it a bit of shape. That's all I'm going to do with them. Right, so I'm going to start by getting the base colours, the shade colour even, onto the shells. So the base colour is um, game colour, heavy ochre, and then I'm giving it a coat of Japanese uniform with very very small highlight of 
deck tan for a sort of, if you imagine, a, um, a bit of a sheen, a metallic sheen. Because this is a, a non-metallic, very simple non-metallic metal approach. I don't like there to be metallic colours in amongst all these, <laughs> well, non-metallic colours. I prefer a, um, a flatter, a flatter look overall. So you can see I'm just adding some Japanese uniform here. Enamel crates look quite nice just with those little spots of colour. And then some deck tan just on the top there, you see just where the light would hit it. Just helps them pop, especially as there's some shade colour left behind the, 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 the bases of the shells. And just hitting relevant points on these discarded empty cases where the light might catch them. And you can see the overall looks quite attractive. And now I've actually moved on to painting the uh, the wooden supports for the dugouts. And I'm using a glaze or a thin wash, whatever you might call it, of green grey. Just try and start building up that sort of wooden patina that you get, um, if such a word exists, uh, from sort of real trees. Okay, so we've got something that looks fairly great at the moment. So I want to give it a, a bit of a, um, a brown finish. So going to make a very very careful wash of flat earth. So I just want to bring a bit more of a wooden colour back to these without it going proper brown. You know trees tend to be sort of greyish greenish, uh, the bark anyway, uh, greyish greenish colours and these logs here would have been cut down raw, slammed into the, into the ground raw so they'll have that raw um, unfinished kind of look. Okay, so that's the wash dried. I'm quite happy with that. So now I just have to do the open ends and quite simple old wood. This is just to represent the exposed hardwood, uh, heartwood. We can add some moss and such likes onto the tree trunk. As I said, only if you want to take that step, but it helps break up the, oh, the dull greyness off it. There's not a lot going on. Now for this I've used some matte varnish and some flock. You know, flock, not um, static grass but flock. So I'll just show you um, how I apply it. So I've picked a few spots to add little blobs of matte varnish and with the brush still wet I've picked up some of that flock and I'm just dabbing it on and adding a little bit more matte varnish and then repeating the process. It might help to wait um, between doing all these blobs but I can be a bit impatient. So these guys are ready for some crew. So I'll go on to that next. Look at the drivers, command, loaders, gunners. And then we'll get around to finishing the bases once they're all in place. And that will be it done, but a bit of work to go yet, folks. They're quite a ragtag bunch to begin with this crew you've got. For instance, guys in overalls, guys in camo smocks, guys in tunics. Um, so I'm going to paint them in a ragtag kind of way too. I think it'll it'll go well with the sort of ragtag circus-like look of all the different camos on the vehicles. Um, so some guys are in overalls, so I'm going to paint them in grey. I'm also going to paint some trousers in grey as well. Um, for that, I'm going to be using dark grey, if I can get this in camera sorry, dark grey with a highlight of London grey that's over a black undercoat and for 
the uniforms I'm going to use two different excuse me two different colors um dark mud highlighted with green grey and this Panzer Aces German Tank Crew 2 field grey colour highlighted with Africa Corps Tank Crew once again from Panzer Aces. Now there's also some camo smocks um, I'll see what I'm going to do with those camo smocks in a moment and there's some officers as well which will need a little maybe a couple little bits different but those are the basic colours that I'm going to use and I'm going to mix it up and I'll just uh, video myself at various points doing those various colours so you get an idea of how I've got to get the paint on create the depth contrast and highlight on these tiny little guys so we're starting with dark grey over a black undercoat and you can see how I follow the shape off the sculpt, you know, follow the shape off the uniform. A good sculpt will have lots of shapes, so you just have to let your eyes do the walking, so to speak, and your fingers do the talking. You see how you can just sort of sweep around, leaving just enough shade, colour, to define the shape. Working all around the figure, like the arms and the legs, all the way around, making sure everything, everything joins up as you would expect. See, we're doing the collar there. Before I move on to the larger areas, it's easier to do the smaller areas first and then compensate for any problems when you paint the larger areas. And then I'm just trying to preserve that pinching around the middle, around the waist of the overall. It appears to be a time consuming way of doing it, but it's quick because you don't have to wash and then repaint the base colour. You just go straight into the highlight colour. And I always look to place the highlight line above the dark line where possible. And this is this can be a quite a quick part of the process because the map's laid out for you. That, that's me, by the way. That's just what I do when I clean my brush and then draw the bristles through um, a sort of pinch in the palm of my hand to keep them straight and I, don't, I do that gently so as not to drag the bristles the bristles and I do not twist just a wee hint um, but you can see there the, the figures now really got a lot of shape and a lot of depth and here we're over to, to one of the uh, German Uniform colours that I use. There I'm starting with all the awkward little bits that are hard to reach before moving on to the arm. You can see I have completed the trousers already. I've given this guy the look of a tunic over the top of overalls. Just continuing to work around. Filling in, leaving the shade. You can see it a lot of the times, especially on arms, it's like painting lines and then joining the lines up. Deciding how much shade should be left. You shouldn't leave too much shade. And here's a highlight. And that really just makes all the details pop. You can see the, the lines always going right beside the shade. That gives the greatest contrast. The greater the contrast, the clearer the shape. And there's not much else to these guys, so they're they're almost done. So another way of getting the other paint combination is dark mud as the main colour. And our good friend green grey as the highlight. And this is a, a nice big long overcoat, so you can do big long lines here, leaving the shade colour in where the folds will be. It's a nicely sculpted figure, so you don't have to 
worry too much about where to leave the shade. Some figures are a bit flatter, but then that's where you just put a downward brush stroke, then leave a tiny space, another downward brush stroke, and create the shape yourself. Once again, just following the, the sculpt on the back, adding another coat where necessary, coat of paint that is. Just working around the arms, some quite small paint um, strokes required in the crook of the arm. And then there's a hat, just carefully follow the shape of the hat. so that it's clearly recognisable when we're adding, after we're added the highlight on. And then just following those lines, once again, highlight beside shade. That will give us the depth that we need to define the shape of the figure. Now the rest of the um, the painting is well covered in my How to Paint German Grenadiers video, so I'll stick away a link to that um, in the screen and also on the end screen. And that'll let you see how, for instance, how I'm doing the helmets, how I'm doing the boots, belts, uh, or various pieces of equipment, you know, so the gators, all these kind of things. You'll see that in a lot more detail if you go to that video after this, after this. So that's the crew all finished, folks. Now, I've put, I've basically dry fitted everything back onto the base because I cut some of them to match certain holes because uh, some are a good fit, some are not. Um, so they're all in there just now, nice and snug. And I know that everything is in the right place and I'm not going to end up having to trim any bases after painting them. I've put the uh, the gunners and the guys firing the guns, I've glued them in place. I've glued the drivers into the vehicles. I've got uh, the commanders glued onto the command base and I'll have to put some uh, bulk material down before putting the surface on and then I'll paint it to match the other bases. I've also got a wee extra guy, but there's a reason I painted an extra guy that'll come out in due course. But it's nothing to do with this video. So, I now have to get these guys attached nice and securely and neatly to the bases and I'll show you next how I do that. Now fixing the figures to the base could be a two-step process with super glue and then filler. But I prefer a one-step process that um, that uses the filler to fix the figure to the base. These are very, very tight um, to work around. Uh, there's so many things on the bases are very busy. And this approach, I find, A, gives a really, really firm grip because all the cavities around the base and the figure is filled. And, and also at the same time, I can fill the gap really quite easily. So, I'll take these off and, oh sorry, right, this is what I am using. I've started using that recently and I like the texture it gives to bases. It's very good at holding elements to a base as well such as stones and, and such likes. It gives a nice strong grip. So I'm confident when this dries it's going to give a really strong grip for the figure. So I'm, I'm loading it up, keeping most of the material on the edge of the base. And I'm going to carefully put it in, find the right fit, and then squeeze it down. I'm then going to have a look around and see if 
there's enough filler coming up and pretty much there is. That's a good seal right the way around. There's a couple of bits where it's not quite filled in and you can take it out and add a bit more filler to that and put it back in. So. And there you go. Don't know if you can hear that, but it's a gritty sound to get that iffy texture. So that's it in place. I then need to smooth out. It's acrylic base, so you can just use a brush and if necessary, take some more from the pot. And here I can even go on to the, the metal part of the base and cover that with this to give it a nice texture. I can fill in that section there. I had to cut away a part of the base to make it fit. The brush is allowing me to be quite accurate for how I'm putting that in. And then I'm just trying to make a nice smooth transition between the figure base and the sculpted resin base. And there you go, that's in place. Once it's dry, I'll leave it to dry overnight, it's going to be rock solid. You could pull it out, but you'd have to want to pull it out. It's not going to fall out by itself. Now here's one that I did before. This guy here, you have to be careful that the gun will mount with him in place. So I made sure the gun was in place as I was fitting him. And they can just sit there now and, and dry. And then paint with the base colour again. A little bit of pigment, pigment, and that's going to blend in. So I'm just going to finish the rest of these. So the crew are in place. Base is touched up. Good to go for the final stage of them. The bogies are on medium bases. A little bit of work to do, I'll show you that in a minute. Decals are in place, even little number plates there, they're in place. So we're getting closer and closer. So I'm going to show you painting Tamil with a brush because I need to paint this detail, it's hard to paint it before this stage, because of how I wanted things to look. And you can see I've also added a few other bits and pieces around the base. And the base itself is textured with the Vallejo Earth um, paste again. So the thing to remember with Tamiya paint is, you need to let it dry between coats. It will drag all over the place, unlike normal uh, acrylic where you can Quickly run the brush over it, move it around, tidy it up and such like. With Tamiya you have to let it dry. I'll give it an, an undercoat of old wood just to help it go on nice and cleanly in what I hope will be two coats. It's also leaving a little bit of shade. I don't have to worry about pin washing, it's just a little detail. Now patience is required and I have to leave that till it's completely dry and then, then I can give it another coat and I'll just chip it up in the same way as I've done the rest of the, um, the bogies here. This is the kind of look I'm after 
we might add a little brown element or two to the ground cover just for a wee bit of variety but it's a spring look with some bright green grass some spring growths most of the front of the dugout is going to be bare earth because it's a dugout so there'll be some, there'll be some regrowth but that's the plan I'll be using for certain I'll be using these kind of tufts here got some nice little leaves on them and some nice bright excuse me some nice bright static grass and white glue so I'll show you sticking that on the bases but it's probably very familiar territory for everybody so I use a tray whenever I'm working with flock and I leave my bases in the tray until they've dried and you can see I'm I'm just sort of like dropping it in in the tighter areas pushing in but otherwise just using my pinching my fingers and just boom 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 and then tipping it off you can use the static grass um applicators which give a very very good effect excuse me folks I'm a bit out of shot um they look nice but I don't have anything like that but I just try to break up the shapes don't dominate with any one colour so it's a bit of earth a bit of flock and some tufts um, and in the end as you'll see I've added some bright tufts as well once again just to stop the green dominating uh, the final look too much Right folks, here is the completed box set All done and ready for the tabletop You can see even though it's just two guns, there's a hell of a lot to this box set With the extra crew The bases, the transport So it's well worth the investment if you can still find one of these guys one of these boxes kicking about as you can see I've actually added some flowers to the bases sort of flower like tufts this is um, for a spring kind of setting so I, I decided not to use any brown tufts but that extra little bit of colour I think the the gardeners would call it variegation, I don't know, um, just adds a little bit of colour to help just bring a bit of focus to the bases. And a couple of things I did to the gun barrels, you will notice this one here has got kill rings and this one here has got a camonet with some foliage in it. The camonet is just bandage gauze. And I've actually tied that to the barrel as opposed to glued it to the barrel because I hate trying to glue something like gauze or bandage gauze to a barrel because where's the, where's the glue going to actually grip it and you end up having to put too much on. Then you've got the danger of misting or other, other kind of problems so I tied it on with string and it will stay put. So there you go folks. I hope you enjoyed the video, found it instructional and interesting. I'm going to post up a slideshow now of these guys on a on the tabletop, so to speak, in action, plus other other box sets of uh, others of this box set even that I have completed previously. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe, and I'll see if I can get similar how-to guides up on the channel as regularly as possible.
Welcome back to the channel again, folks. This episode. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the channel again, 